Welcome back to Experts on the Spot. I'm Dr. Ehud Cohen from the Hebrew University Medical School, and I'm working here at the Institute for Medical Research, Israel, Canada, trying to explore the mechanisms underlying late onset neurodegenerative disorders. Thank you for submitting your questions and sending the emails. And I'm going to uh, answer those questions today. So let's start. Mark asks, uh, do you have any idea uh, regarding the mechanism of tardive uh, dyskinesia? So Mark, uh, although this disease is linked to dopaminergic neurons, uh, just like Parkinson's disease, as far as I know, there is no uh, link between uh, this disorder and toxic protein aggregation. And there's, this is not part of my expertise, but as far as I know, it's related to a medical treatment which was um, prescribed to uh, patients. But uh, sorry, that's uh, pretty much the uh, thing I can say about uh, tardive dyskinesia. Uh, so Hadar asks, uh, what is the readout for the experiment uh, in the worm, and uh, how did you see the aging symptoms in worms? So in the worm system, we expressed A-beta, the aggregative peptide, which is mechanistic mechanistically linked to the development of Alzheimer's disease in the muscles. This is an artificial system, and our readout in this regard was paralysis among the worm population. It was shown before that if you express this aggregative peptide in the muscles, you get progressive paralysis. And we use this as a readout. The aging was uh, pretty much uh, essayed as lifespan. Now, because the warm system is artificial, we launched another project which was based on mice. And in those mice, we created long-lived or naturally aging animals, which have um, the human uh, Alzheimer uh, genes or Alzheimer related genes and we used a variety of assays that uh, is widely accepted and uh, normally used in the Alzheimer's uh, research community. This includes behavioral assays, biochemical and neuropathological assays. So in the one paper which was published in uh, the magazine Science, we um, looked at artificial system looking at the warm muscle but it enables us to manipulate aging with ease and relatively quickly. In the second paper we published in 2009, which was uh, published in the magazine Cell, we showed that the same principles are conserved from the worm to mammals, and we found that by manipulating the IGF-1 signaling pathway, which extends lifespan and slows aging, we can uh, mitigate the um, effects of the uh, Alzheimer-like disease in the brain and actually postpone its onset. Next question was asked by Margarita, which uh, asked whether Alzheimer's is a genetic disease and can it be prevented by taking action on our daily lives? So I have to divide this answer to two parts. We have uh, identified in the scientific community over many years uh, that there are mutations which are specifically linked to Alzheimer's disease and by the way it's true for other neurodegenerative disorders and this, these diseases are carried by individuals, members of specific families. Uh, in those cases these, uh, these individuals develop the uh, disorder relatively early and when I say early I mean uh, around the fifth decade of life. And <coughs> those cases only uh, explain about 10% of the clinical cases. What about the other 90%? So the other 90% are considered to be sporadic. However, there are several genes that were identified, and maybe the most prominent is APOE uh, variant 4, which increased the risk for um, the onset of sporadic diseases. And when we say sporadic, this is a disease which normally onsets at the seventh decade of life and has no specific mutation among the three genes which are found in families to be mutated. What can we do to prevent it? So this is beyond my expertise because I'm working on molecular mechanisms. However, you'll be able to find online and from other sources that uh, doctors 
uh, suggest people and recommend to uh, learn uh, new languages or uh, train the brain using all type of uh, thinking um, and uh, mathematical uh, methods as well as uh, avoiding uh, environmental contamination such as uh, metals and uh, you know, exercise and all the other things that doctors normally recommend. However, as I said before, it's beyond my expertise because we don't know about the specific mechanisms which protect the brain from Alzheimer's using the methods. However, many people claim that it works. They want to ask similar questions to, the, to Margarita's asking uh, are there any ways to prevent Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease and I hope that my answer to Margarita has uh, answered your question uh, and I think that in general the same answer refers to not only to Alzheimer's but to other neurodegenerative disorders as well we don't have anything specific we can recommend on but as I said before this is beyond my expertise but there is, uh, I would say, widely accepted theme that healthy lifestyle, including exercise, healthy diet, and brain exercise, like doing some math and um, uh, learning languages and uh, stuff like that, can uh, prevent or at least postpone the onset of these disorders. Last question was submitted by Julia. And Julia, uh, you ask regarding uh, ALD which is not a neurodegenerative disease which underlies by toxic protein aggregation. So again, this is not my uh, field of expertise. And I would recommend you to uh, search at the Hebrew U um, me Medical School website and find who is the person who best fit your needs for um, consulting or contacting contacting however if you want to contact me you'll be able to send me an email and my email is at the site as well okay one more thing that I would like to mention that by uh, by the end of this month of April 2010 I'll be in Canada and I'll present my work and uh, we'll discuss uh, different aspects of aging and the links between the aging process and uh, toxic neurodegeneration so I hope to see you there I'd like to thank everyone for uh, the interest and for uh, submitting uh, comments and questions and see you on Expert on the Spot.